Okay, today we're going to talk about sticky headers and how to allow for extra space on those automatically. I've got a couple of demos here. So I've got a header template there and I've got a basic page I've created. We're just throwing some content in there. And it's just got a standard header that scrolls with the page. We can see the spacing using padding in our top section here. Got a spacing there. We've got the spacing at the bottom. We've got the same amount of spacing, top and bottom. Nice and consistent. Watch what happens when we make this header sticky. So if I go into this header here, go to my template settings, and I make that a sticky header, and I want to scroll out of the way at, say, 200 pixels. Um, save that. Now let's have a look at our page. I'm just going to refresh this page. Typical example here, we've lost our spacing at the top of the section uh, compared to the bottom because what's happened is this header now is actually sitting on top of that section, taking up some of that spacing. So we need to allow extra padding at the top of the section to accommodate that sticky header that we just enabled there. So there's a lot of ways you can do this. I'm going to recommend uh, using JavaScript for this, and then we've got code for you for that because uh, it is just easier and more consistent. So heading back to the header, if we go into the advanced CSS and have a look at our global CSS, scroll down. This is for ATF, by the way, so you're going to have ATF enabled. Um, and scroll down, we've got a section here which talks about sticky headers. And what we're doing is we're, we're telling you you can manually measure the height at the different breakpoints and you can manually add your values here. So that's you measuring it using Chrome DevTools, going in here and adding that in there. And that works okay, but it only changes the header height at those breakpoints, or only detects, I should say, the header height at those breakpoints, not in between. So if you've got a responsive site that's constantly changing, uh, you're going to have different amounts of spacing at the top depending on where you are between those breakpoints if you use this manual method. The better way of doing this is using JavaScript. And I've got a link here to it just so if you just copy that link, we go to a new tab and put that in there. We have some codes. I'm just going to copy all of that JavaScript from that block there. So copy to the clipboard and back to a header template. And I'm going to insert a code block. Now, I would strongly recommend that you actually put this. Actually, why did that go inside there? Good on your brick. Sometimes it puts it inside. Sometimes it doesn't. I strongly recommend that you put this in your code manager, child theme, whatever. But for this demo, I'm just going to stick it in a code block on the actual header here. So I'm going to call this my uh, sticky header, header code. All right, we're going to get rid of the HTML that Bricks automatically sticks into there by default. Now, you have to enable execution of code in your Bricks settings to be able to do this. Otherwise, you won't have this option here. So enable that. And we want to render without wrapper because we're not going to be styling this. So we don't need anything, a wrapper around our JavaScript here. And then we're going to paste our JavaScript into this box here and hit the save. All right, now let's go back to this page here. Nothing's changed yet. Let's have a look at the Chrome DevTools and look at the elements. And you'll see now on the body class, we have a style tag with our 80 header height at 80 pixels. If I change the width of that page, it now says 70 pixels. If I keep scrolling, keep scrolling, it's now 66 pixels. What it's doing is actually measuring the height of that every time the width changes or a page load and it's updating this variable that's what the javascript is doing we now need to use that to work out how much extra padding do we have so here's a great example we've got our accent buzzing right up against our header because the actual uh, top section goes all the way to the top there and our padding is underneath the header so we're going to fix that so what we've done in um, ATF is given you a variable under your site setting spacings variable here, which is your section padding block. So your block padding, as you know, is your top and bottom padding. So we've got a variable for that. So I'm going to copy that variable name. Now we need to create some CSS. Now, 
we have not included this in ATF because realistically, you we, we don't want to bloat uh, ATF with every possible option. Some of the stuff you just should be able to do yourself, and we're going to allow you to do that. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is we can put it on our header here. I'm going to add a uh, go into the um, CSS for that header, and we have some header on there already. That's just for our uh, some CSS just for our logo. So I'm now going to add some more CSS, uh, and I'm going to target the um, main. I think it's the bricks main. Let's have a look here. It is. So we want the bricks main ID, and then we want the first section. We want to affect the padding on that. So I'm going to grab this uh, bricks content. Come back over to here, and I'll just put it on the, I won't create a separate class, but I'll just stick it on our header because that's the only place it's going to apply anyway. So I'm going to go for my Bricks content, immediately followed by a section, which is our first first child. Okay, so we're saying we want the Bricks content, the section has to be a direct descendant or direct child of that, and it's only the first one that we want. So we're targeting the bricks content. The next, uh, uh, so the direct children are the sections here, but we only want the first one there. Okay. Now what we want to do is set our padding block start, so the top padding, and we want this to be a calculation of our uh, not our bricks content. Uh, we could probably just type that in actually. Uh, section heading block. So you want the variable section floating block plus our header height. AT header height. So the AT header height is going to be affected by our JavaScript as we saw. Over here, we see that header height, AT header height, that changes with JavaScript over time as we move the uh, viewport in and out. So let's see if that works for us. I'm going to save that. And hopefully, I haven't messed this up and this will work for us. That's a calc, that plus that. Let's have a look now. Okay, now we've got Extra padding. No, we don't. What is going on? What have we done? Oh, yes, we have. We just haven't scrolled. Okay. So now I'm going to move this to the side so we can see what's going on. So we can see now we've got padding at the bottom, padding at the top, and they're the same. Okay. Go bigger. Our padding bottom, top and padding bottom. Let's have a look at what it actually is. See the padding there in the green? The padding goes all the way to the top, but we're allowing for that header height plus the section padding block and that gives us our clearance no matter what the viewport width is it automatically calculates that padding and gives us the same spacing top and bottom of that top section so hopefully that makes sense and um, that's something that you can use um, the only reference to atf is the basically really these variables the at section padding block and the at header height Again, you can set that manually by going into your globals and you can set that there manually or you can use the JavaScript method, which I've just done and it's pretty damn simple. You just grab that, just chuck it into a code block and that's all you have to do. Just chuck it in the code block and execute it and then you don't have to worry about setting any of these variables down here. All right, guys, hopefully that is something you will be able to use and if you have any questions, chuck them in the comments.